It's my honor to introduce tonight's 2019 Global Leadership Award winner, Howard Brodsky. Howard is a pioneer uh, in the cooperative business model. He dedicated his career to helping entrepreneurs and small business owners become more successful through the use of co-ops. Um, Howard is a member of the Co-op Hall of Fame. I was at the, I was in DC for that event. His sister, is Barbara, is here as well. That's when we met. And uh, sometimes I think we often don't fully appreciate the talent we have most locally. So people love Howard. Everyone who knows Howard Brodsky locally adores Howard. But this is really one of the world's great leaders in the co-op movement. He travels globally, he speaks globally, people know his work, he's had enormous impact. And as we move increasingly towards, if you prefer to call it a gig economy or a platform economy, or certainly a world in which people will be fending for themselves and less and less frequently working for a large employer, co-ops may be just the best answer. And we talk about this all the time. And in some ways I feel like the world is catching up to Howard Brodsky. Um, <laughs> and we need his work more than ever. Um, with initiatives like the Cooperatives for a Better World and CCA for, Global, for Social Good, Howard's a shining example of how we can use business and business principles to, va to increase value, um, to help small business owners do better, and also to help communities. Um, since 2014, he's been working to bring Cooperatives for a Better World to life. It's an international program to help small businesses around the globe work together to create economies of scale. And I, uh, probably, he probably curses me because it's a rare week that goes by when I don't say to someone, you need to talk to Howard Brodsky. Um, and, and, and that's true for global work and, and, and elsewhere as well. Um, in 2008, Howard launched CCA for Social Good with the vision of helping nonprofit and childcare organizations realize the benefits of scale by unlocking resources. Today, CCA for Social Good's shared resources platform provides 1600, over 1,600 tools to childcare providers across, across 29 states. Uh, no surprise to any of you, Howard and his wife Joan, who's here, are active. Uh, in all sorts of organizations, including Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Canterbury Shaker Village, and a number of other New Hampshire nonprofits. Um, Howard uh, is one of my 14 bosses. Did I mention how good looking and smart he is? <laughs> um, <laughs> he's on the board of Southern New Hampshire University. I met Howard when I took this job in 2003. I remember we had a lunch at Cotton, and I remember thinking, you know, this is going to be one of my most valuable counselors and thought partners in the work, and he remains so to this day. Um, and he is a good man and a good friend. So please uh, join me in congratulating Howard Brodsky, this year's award winner. Paul, thank you so much for your kind words and also uh, for your friendship for many, many, many years. Uh, if there's one organization I can tell you I'm proud to be part of, it's Southern New Hampshire University. It's the organization I'm most proud to have any association with. And it's because of Paul's visionary leadership that's really changing the face of education in so many positive ways and giving opportunity to people that would not have that opportunity. And I see the work he's doing throughout the country, throughout the world, in refugee camps, and it's just amazing how he's changing the face. So, uh, Paul, I'm just proud to be on the board. Thank you for my, uh, making me available to do that. Um, also, I would like to thank my sisters here today, my Barbara, who's, we fortunately have a very close family. And uh, my sister has been an instrumental part of my life. Matter of fact, uh, my senior in high school, I was not gonna go to college, and my sister, very nicely told my mother, if we have a small family business, if we don't, he doesn't go to college, sell the business. And <laughs> that, was a, that was a real incentive for me to go to college. So it would have, <laughs> and so I, I, my sister's been an instrumental part. And certainly uh, Joan has been my, uh, my mission partner uh, in so many ways with the cooperative world. Uh, she understands as much about cooperatives as I do and as, as much committed to the cooperative movement as I have, and have traveled around the world with me, understanding the value and, and just how socially good and economically good and how social justice cooperatives bring to so many people. And also, I would like to welcome uh, Senator Hassan and Congressman Pappas. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I, it was interesting. I turned on the TV this morning, and they talked about that we're at a 50-year low on unemployment. 
And at the same time, it's interesting, another 50-year mark is that the top 1% of wealth in America is at a 50-year high. So on one hand, we have 50 years of low unemployment. At the other hand, the top 1% have more wealth than they've ever had in 50 years. It's an interesting dichotomy of what's going on in our world. It's not even. And 80% of the wealth that's been accumulated in the last 20 years has gone to the top 1%. It's interesting. The black America net worth averages $3,500. That's everything. That's your car, whatever equity house, whatever clothes, whatever, is 35. 37% of America have a negative net worth. This is not an equal society we're in. Wealth is not being shared equally at all. You know, seven richest people in the world have more wealth than half the world's population. So you could go outside and put them in a van, and half the world, more than several continents, you could put seven people have more wealth. And in the United States, three people, it's not just in other countries, three people have more wealth than half the population in the United States. So, you know, while we see big companies give big donations, in so many ways, they're giving money to fix the problems they created. They're, you know, it's wonderful to give a notion, but they're creating the problems. And capitalism is wonderful, but capitalism out of control is not wonderful. And I always say, what's wonderful about cooperatives, cooperatives are capitalism with a conscience. I believe in capitalism. It's very good to understand a capitalistic society, but when it's not good for all the people, it shouldn't be good for any of the people. And when they talk about full employment, I can tell you that full employment is not full opportunity. Because many people don't have opportunity. We have 13 million single mothers, or fathers, mostly single mothers in our society, taking care of 22 million children. A lot of these are minimum wage. How can a family possibly live on $8 or $9 a year, an hour and take care of a family? And it's great that Walmart raised their wages to $11 minimum an hour. Tell me who can live on $11 an hour in our society. So we're living in a world I call it extraction economy. And what is the extraction economy? It's when a disproportionate share is going to people that aren't putting in the labor and the resources to do the work. You know, if you look at the home care world, the home care has over 4 million people that are in home care. It's very neat in New Hampshire more than anywhere. And yet, the agencies that place people in home care are taking 28 to $30 an hour, and the care work is getting 12. That's extraction economy. That is not gonna work for everybody. And I can tell you that co-ops are really empower people. Kaylee, who's here was with me, who runs our Cooperatives for a Better World, has seen the power of cooperatives around the world. They empower people, they're inclusive, people first, not profit first. Isn't that the way it should be? It shouldn't be people last. What happens when people last is when we have subsidies. People don't want, they might need subsidies, they don't want subsidies. They want opportunity. They want hope. You know, but what we're doing is we've developed a, an economy where subsidies are necessary. And where it is necessary, we should give it. But that doesn't provide long-term solutions to people. And cooperatives can provide long-term solutions. They're inclusive. Cooperatives, a lot of time, take care of the most needy in our society. Women and minorities share a much greater percentage of growth and management and cooperatives of any other organization. I'm very happy in our organization itself, and Kelly knows, that we have doubled the amount of women executives in our company than the national average. And during the recession, it was interesting. You know, what's the power of family businesses? Well, during the recession, one out of every four family businesses that we were involved with went out of business during the recession. It was a terrible time. It was interesting. Anybody that was part of our organization, whether they were a bike store, a floor covering store, a childcare center, we had less than 2% go out of business. And what happens when a family business goes out of business? That person's not gonna make 80,000 or whatever they make, 100,000, whatever they were gonna make, all of a sudden they are looking at a minimum wage job. 
and you want to know how the inequality furthers itself? It's that. How can companies compete with national companies that are billion dollar companies if they don't have scale? And cooperatives give scale. I can tell you our child care cooperative, when we, we have saved individual child care centers between thirty and forty thousand dollars a year on insurance. We've saved some thirty thousand dollars a year on food cost. And what have they done? They put that back into taking care of the kids, which is what it should be. And two prime examples to me of what the power of cooperatives. So there's one cooperative right here in our country called Prospera. It's in the West Coast in California. Many women came over from Central America with little skills and they became home care workers or homemade workers. They're taking care of cleaning. And they were making $20,000 a year. Well, as you can imagine, in California, you cannot live on $20,000 a year. And they formed a cooperative called Prospera. And what Prospera did is place them, rather than an agency place them, so that they owned the cooperative. And in one year, they went from making 20000 to 41000 a year, all women. That's what you call empowerment. That's what you call inclusion. And that's what you call opportunity. There's two types of poverty. There's poverty of eco economic poverty, and there's poverty of hope. And I believe at cooperatives give hope. And the other one, which is a wonderful story, is a cooperative in Togo, West Africa, called Alafia. Alafia, shea butter trees, shea trees, the nuts used to fall, and women in Togo, Africa, for years, went and picked up the nuts and brought them to the marketplace. And literally, they got pennies for what they were bringing every day. There was somebody from the Peace Corps that was there, and they said, you know, I think that this could be a cooperative. And they formed a cooperative of the women, almost all women. And in Togo, 91% of young girls drop out of school. So it increases the poverty. There's no money. It's a cycle. And they formed a cooperative. And what did the cooperative do? It built a warehouse so all the young women could bring their, the shea butter nuts to the warehouse. And then in the United States, they became an arm that actually manufactured, took the oil out, and made shea butter and oil and beauty products. What started out with 15 or 20 women today has 7,000 women making four times what they were making, in, not 20% not more, not 50% more, making four times what they were making, having insurance. And the co-op not only has done that for the women, the co-op has built 10 schools in Togo. The co-op has supplied 8,000 bicycles for kids to get to school, because it's five to 10 miles to get to school. They've supplied supplies for 35,000 children and planted 57,000 trees. Now that's what you call capitalism with a conscience. That is working, everybody working together. It can work. You know something? There's nothing wrong with capitalism. It's when people are sucking the money out of the society and it's not helping everybody that we're all being hurt. And so I would just say that I think, especially being here in the World Affairs Council, our society doesn't have boundaries. We don't have country boundaries. And I know how much Senator Hassan and Congressman Pappas believe in this. But thinking that we can't look at other neighbors or do other things, I mean, should social justice be at a border? Should poverty be at a border? Should inclusiveness be at a border? It's responsibility of all of us to make all of us better. Thank you.